Good evening and welcome to Gunner Shot. Uh, I was to discuss about the Cold War between India and China, but developments in between Israel and Iran have diverted me here. We've gone to the Middle East uh, and the West Asian scenario. And let's discuss that. Right. At the outset, before I get into this, let me wish all of you a happy Vishu, a happy Baisaki, and a happy Putando, wherever you are. Let's just enjoy the day. Okay. Uh, the the Israel-Iran spat, war, call it whatever you want, is a strategic shift which has happened in West Asia. Till, say, a few days back, the war was between Hamas and Israel. Now, the goalposts have changed. It is no more Hamas and Israel. It is Iran and Israel. It's no more between a non-conventional force and a nation. It's between two nations. So that's the first great strategic shift. Right. The next thing is the center of gravity has shifted towards Iran. Iran, as we all know, was playing in the shadows. It was playing the dark shadows game. It was the puppeteer and its puppets were all outside. Like you see in this map, Hamas, Hezbollah, militias of Syria and Iraq, Houthis. And Iraq was Iran was sitting back tight and letting everyone play the game and calling the shots. Till Israel decided to change the game plan. When it hit the Israeli diplomats or the diplomatic office in Damascus, it just changed the game plan. It forced Iran to come out of the shadows and face their situation squarely. And that's what you've seen. In retaliation, what has Iran done? It seized the oil tanker of Israeli origin in the Strait of Hormuz, kept it fine. It won't pinch Israel much beyond a point. It fired 300 drones, missiles, whatever, slow-moving objects. All of them have been knocked out, 99%, 90 to 99%. Uh, one little girl has been injured and all that. And for Israel, militarily, this is a defensive victory. It's been able to defend itself. For Iran, it's been a failed attack. No effect. For Israel, they are taking out of that to diplomats in Damascus was true to their form. Now, Israel is now shifted to its home ground. You have to understand the shift which has taken place. It's doing what it does best. Surgical operations, conventional operations, with strategic small operations with strategic ramifications. So now you're seeing two methods of war fighting come to the fore or statecraft come to the fore. One was pulling back its punches, operating through its puppeteers or the, through its puppets. Second, Israel still, till now was fighting with its back to the wall. It was, it had to, he had, it had to explain uh, all the, uh, you know, human rights violations, X, Y, Z to everyone. America was unwilling to get involved. And all of us were worried, what will happen if Israel gets involved? And it, it has got involved. Israel has pulled it in. Now, the allies are firmly with Israel. They helped hit some of these drones. To the extent, some of these drones and these missiles, whatever they uh, were, which flew over UAE and uh, Jordan have been also knocked off. So in a way, Jordan and UAE also got involved and maybe Arabia, Saudi Arabia. So 
the whole story has shifted. Okay, now there are very great ramifications. Let's let's understand this. Uh, what are the force capabilities? What going ahead? You have to look at the force capabilities. If you don't understand the force capabilities, you'll be out of the equation. What was Iran's strength? Iran's strength was these militias. You have to remember, Iran doesn't have an air force worth its name. Iran has rockets, missiles, drones. Iran has militias. Okay. And now it's got hit. And it's responded in this manner. Now I'll have to go back in time. Sometime back, Major General Soleimani was taken out by the USA in a drone attack. There was a lot of hullah gullah then. Iran wanted to retaliate. It retaliated. It fired some rockets. They went, fell somewhere. No one knew where they fell. Nothing happened. And Iran came out of that grandoy statement saying that we have retaliated and we have taken our revenge and all that. And I don't know what they did internally. That was the end of the story. This is a rerun of that whole story. Now, the question before Iran is will it hold back or take it forward? The statements which have come out so far from Iran is that, well, We've done what we had to do. We've, we reserve the uh, you know, right to retaliate and we have done that. But it has not hit Israel. And that's pretty apparent all over the world. Okay. Another thing which has come out. Israel, I mean, not Israel, Iran. Iran does not have the reach. Iran does not have the reach to hit Israel beyond a point. That's something which is very important. Remember, without an air force, without long-range conventional forces, the distance between Iran and Israel, over 13 to 1400 kilometers border to border, right? It's very difficult to cross. If you don't have an air force, you don't have a satellite system, X, Y, Z, you just can't go. With just militias, you can't go. And now the militias have limited capability. All they can do is fire missiles. And Israel wouldn't have been foolish enough to undertake this without handling them. In any case, its back is secure. Hamas might not have died out, but it's hardly a military force to be dealt with. It won't come out. So it now has to deal with Hezbollah and Houthis. Houthis can at best fire a few missiles. And Israel will swat them off. Hezbollah will get hit. If Hezbollah starts a missile war, it will get hit. And Hezbollah doesn't have the strength to enter Israel. It will get massacred. So now what? This is a war by proxy. That war by proxy or direct war is going to be indirect war. Non-contact warfare. In any non-contact warfare, Israel will have the upper hand. Because... It has an air force. It has a strategic communication system. It has the space capability. It has the electronic warfare capability, right? To do what it wants to do. Plus, Israel has the capability to hit Iran in its guts. We've seen it often. Sometime back, Israel assassinated a nuclear scientist of Iran within Iran, near his house. It also took out a couple of nuclear installations some time back. And if you go back to the Ozirak affair, that was a, a different era. But then even now it has shown that kind of a ability. So now in a conventional matchup, Iran will be at a disadvantage. So where does this go? From the sp statements of the Israeli spokesman, it doesn't appear that they're going to stop. 
they have something up their sleeve. And they might do something inside Iran. I mean, I don't have a doubt about it. And as far as Iran is concerned, what do they do now? Okay, now, so this is where it is. The military advantage has shifted, the goalposts have sh shifted. This asymmetric warfare has taken a new turn. Okay, look at the targets. As far as targets are concerned, for either the militias or Iran, it's only that one small target called Israel. You might say it can hit any part of Israel. It can. But they don't have the reach to hit every part of Israel and strike at critical points. Iran is overstretched. You know, grant the Israeli uh, intelligence that they'll fish out who diplomats, yeah, who, all that, and they're all around and they'll hit them. Israel has this capability, this deadly capability, which now Iran has to face. Iran is stretched out. Its assets are out. Plus, it is vulnerable at home. Because it does not have the kind of air defense capabilities or a layered air defense like Israel has. So in a military matchup, I, I mean, there's no guess. Plus, USA, UK, France at least appear to be on the side of Israel. Everyone will now try to say, okay, calm the whole thing down, X, Y, Z. But I, I, I have my doubts. I have my doubts if Israel will uh, now keep quiet. Because for now, I mean, we've all been saying that for Israel, it's an existential battle. Now, no, they're not going to let go. Because they've changed the goalposts very deliberately. Hereafter, we're going to talk about the larger West Asia war. Hamas is out of the equation. The focus now is on Israel, the nuclear issue, X, Y, Z. Shift has happened. And that is something which we have to understand. Okay, now let's talk of the shift. Let's talk of the nuclear angle. We all know Israel has got something. It is nuclear. It might not, it's not, it's undeclared nuclear state. Iran is on the verge of becoming nuclear. If Iran ups the ante, Israel will get after its nuclear systems. And I don't think Israel can protect its nuclear facilities. And by now, I'm sure Iran has something in its mind to hit one of the nuclear facilities and take, get the, degrade the Iranian capability. Iran is at risk now. And Iran well knows it. So, Iran has fought this battle to the asymmetric domain. Right? Israel is getting back through another domain, the conventional domain. Okay? And the nuclear domain. So, you're going to see a, this multi-domain operations here, which are being played out. It is being played out. So, now, will how will Iran respond? Okay. This virtually forces USA, UK, France and all the allies to get into the equation. Okay. Not only that, already they will there are certain you know, I would say inklings of realignment of uh, the Islamic world. Till the battle was between Israel and Hamas. The complete Islamic world was behind Hamas and against Israel. They were forced. Okay. Now it is between Israel and Iran. First, there will be a followed by Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia might not tow the line. UAV will not tow the line. As it is, there are uh, you know reports that some drones and missiles were flying over their airspace, which they have closed. And they had to shoot down. So they'll not be happy about it and they might not support uh, Israel. The overall peace process there is at risk. 
right i mean there's no doubt about that okay the nuclear angle i've discussed then of course the issue of what happens to the chinese interest in the russian interest we all knew that china and russia were backing iran right and they were very happy that iran had fixed usa and israel in a position is that true anymore that's a flip and who will get hit most the chinese because their game plan is getting upset very fast if iran goes out of the equation that many things will you know impact the chinese so they would be worried and we are also seeing that in the past 6 months the chinese influence in this area has been minimal one might say look chinese i mean there is a undeclared a send kind of a agreement with houthis that they were not touching the russian and the chinese ships fine no problems but now what will happen they'll still not touch that's not the issue but what will happen to the chinese control through iran how much can iran control the houthis if iran doesn't support the houthis or control the houthis the houthis will wither away same thing will go happen to hamas and same thing will happen to hezbollah so the split in the muslim world and the focus against iran now right has changed the dynamics how this will get played out i don't know we'll see right i mean that's the way i look at it i think israel has done a great strategic shift right whether it has done with the go ahead from usa or not we don't know but then you uh, israel is that kind of a maverick nation which it will not take any instructions from anyone because for them it's an existential battle till yesterday probably the politics in within israel were against netanyahu and everything and there were no answers but today that might, might change because now it is against iran right so this retaliation has changed the template quite a bit okay now all these puppets of the puppeteer what will happen to them that's the next question the puppeteer is now in the open if the puppeteer has to play if the puppeteer has to play will the puppets hezbollah houthis the uh, shia militias in iraq and syria what will they do will they also start if now they get into the equation israel uk usa and france or any other allies will be free to go at them so the entire story is what will iran now do will israel escalate i don't think israel will now step back it 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 is doing all this with a great plan now well what are the effect of all this on many other things look at this three major straits have been are under now danger strait of hormuz babal mandap and suez canal right all these are now under danger if this war escalates which the likelihood is quite a bit you will see the strait of hormuz likely to close babal mandap as it a thing which means the it threatens the oil economies of this area if the oil economies of this area get threatened then iran's power will get reduced everyone will go against them right now immediately israel and i won't say israel us will be back in the game even china will be at a problem right things might develop in a different manner by tomorrow day after i don't know but then you look at it 
is Malacca Strait also. The impact here will have an impact in South China Sea. All that grand posturing by China, China will have to rethink. These four dots, Suez Canal, Babal Mandeb, Strait of Hormuz, Malacca, out of which two are in problem for China. They are at risk. The Chinese energy state is at risk. As it is, their economy is not doing well. Okay. Russia. Russia will still continue the way it is. It might help Iran. But then what can Iran do? That's the question. Okay. Now, next thing. Let's look at it a little farther. Panama Strait, Babal Mandeb, Strait of Hormuz, Malacca Strait. These four are the major straits of this world. Panama Strait, as it is, the capacity has gone down by 50%. Like Gator, it doesn't have water. So, a lot of uh, you know, transshipment across the Panama Canal is being done by road. Bubble Mandab, it has gone down. Strait of Hormuz also, if it closes, it leaves only Malacca open. If something happens in, with China, Malacca closes and China is in deep trouble. So the Chinese, actually this whole story pictures the Chinese more. They have to now rethink their whole story, at least for the next three, four months, think, till such time, issues stabilize. Okay. Effect. Oil is going to go up. Global inflation is going to go up. As it is, interest rates across the world and inflation is up. So you'll see this going up. So economies are going to get stuck. Hit. Okay. So there is a lot at stake. Even for us. Okay. The bulk of our oil comes from these areas. The only thing is that we have access to Oman. And we might have to open a land route. That old IMEC might have to start kicking in now. And we might we might have to start thinking afresh. So many people ask me, okay, what is what is India's whole story in this? India's story is very simple. You can't take sides against Iran or against Israel. Keep quiet at this point of time. Wait. Let events unfold. What happens tomorrow? What happens day after? Let events unfold. This is the time when we have a great strategic opportunity. We can now tell everyone, enough of this fighting. Let's let go. We can talk sense into people to say, it's time for everyone to come to the table. Because the stakes for everyone are high. The person with the least stakes probably in this whole game is India. Look, I'm saying least stakes with India, but India also has high stakes. Remember, uh, a bulk of our oil and fertilizers comes from that area. If the Strait of Hormuz closes or we have a problem, we also, our economy also will get hit. But compared to others, we have the least stakes to lose. And we'll probably get the best leverages. They say in every chaos or in every disaster, there's an opportunity. As If you consider this as a chaos, if this is a war, everything, India has this opportunity. Will India be able to cash in on it? We don't know. Because we are in an election. We don't know the outcome of the elections. But the government, there's a government in place. And if all goes well, this home government should come back. I mean, we don't know what elections are all about. In, in India, you cannot predict elections beyond a point. And this government, when it comes, it should be able, we should be have, able to have a continuity of our, um, you know, policy to how to handle this whole story. But this is the time for us to handle it better. To be proactive. Because the West are actors in this story. USA is part of this part of the problem. It is not the solution. Russia and China are also part of the problem. They are not the solution. The solution lies today, in my way of looking at it, 
only with countries like Japan and India. Can India and Japan step up to it? And we have huge stakes there. We have a great diaspora out there. We have a uh, you know um, goodwill of everyone out there. If you don't use it now, when will we use it? Okay. So I thought I'll focus on all these issues today. I, I will talk about the India-China Cold War because we are heading into a India-China Cold War. And make no mistake about it, I will talk about it a few days down the line. And that's going to be complicated. And you know, you have to, your thinking has to change. Okay. With this, uh, I'll I'll uh, take questions because a lot of things will come out with the questions. A lot of questions have come out the way I look at it. I'll go one by one and Aram say answer all questions. Okay. Uh, okay. This is this. I have to. Press the notify button to get notification for each episode. Also, the notification is activated for after 10 to 15 minutes from the start of the program. This is just to keep you informed. Uh, what I would suggest, this I think this has happened. What I would suggest to all of you who are having this problem is first unsubscribe from a, a gunner shot, then resubscribe with notification. Okay, uh, that's the best way. And I would also suggest you, uh, you know. Subscribe through another ID if you have, so that if one ID doesn't work, the other ID also uh, starts working. Well, I see I have a new member. Uh, that's Arun Kumar. Okay, let me first deal with him. Uh, Arun Kumar, thanks a lot for becoming a member. So kind of you. I would request more of you to join in. I would also request uh, more to subscribe. I'm glad so many of you have responded to the whole thing. Okay. Bisi Belly Bath, is it the start of the World War III? Look, uh, I will not call it a World War III. Let us see where it goes. Uh, in a way, the World War is already going on. There's a, It's a mixture of a World War and a Cold War which is already going on. You have the Russia-Ukraine war going on. You have this which is expanding. And you have the problem in Philippines which is going on. A lot of action going on there also. If you look at all these three, it's a world war of sorts. So that's how I look at it. Okay. If Israel escalates further, then surely there is a hidden goal. Please, can you try and guess what this... I've told you, they've changed the goalposts. Israel is no more fighting a war with Hamas. The Hamas war has gone to the background. All those issues of the, you know, human rights and genocide and all that will now vanish. Now the focus will shift to Israel, a conventional war. And now Israel, uh, Israel and Iran, it's a conventional war. Now Israel is free to do what it wants to do. So the, that shift has taken place. It's a great strategic shift. And Israel has done it very, very deliberately and very, very thoughtfully. You know, militarily, I think it's a great shift. Politically, will this pay off is to be seen. Okay, how this will end is to be seen. The political end game is not known, but the shift. So the shift is something which we have to keep our pulse on. All this war is to save Ukraine from Russia. That focus war may be shifted from Ukraine to Iran to D I don't think so. I think you're looking at the wrong end of the telescope. This has got nothing to do with Ukraine and Russia. This is an existential issue for uh, Israel and it is acting in that manner. If you have not understood it, you are in a fixed frame of mind. All the best. Uh, okay. Why are you, why are the informed US generals being saying that Israel will lose battle with Hezbollah? Are they bluffing? Look, the thing is that a non-contact warfare, if it goes on for too long, at some point of time, it stretches Israel. And I don't, I have never believed that a non-contact war can be won by anyone. Okay. A non-contact war has to be followed by a contact war. The non-contact war is good where people don't want to get into a contact war or a kinetic war with each other. Or without any territorial members and all that. If 
you are looking at just hezbollah firing missiles that it will hurt israel beyond a point it will not remember is hezbollah is a political organization with a militia if hezbollah takes a hit its own politics and its own fortunes in lebanon will go down so now it will restart to calculate if its own puppeteer iran is getting hit the master is getting hit how much will israel step out or rather hezbollah step out against israel so that is also a question mark okay so i mean i don't know which is uh, you uh, you know informed us general told you that you know if they fight with hezbollah it will uh, they'll lose war is something which is never static everything every time you have to think new and that is what israel has done okay you have to understand there's a turning point which has come right if you don't appreciate the turning point and you don't appreciate the shift which is happening and if you stay stuck in your old thing you'll be there yeah iran knows it can't win against israel uk us with the existing asymmetry in military capability i agree with you completely iran is at risk now so far iran by playing the game from the shadows was happy now iran is at risk so what will iran do will it slowly back out like it did when sulaimani was killed uh, assassinated how much hold will it have on hezbollah or uh, you know houthis or hamas to pull them back is a question mark if it doesn't have then israel's power goes down israel is it i mean sorry iran's power goes down so iran iran has at risk for many more things in this whole story right so if it doesn't control the militias its power goes down if the po- militias act without its advice or rather outside its advice again its power goes down overall there is a problem for iran so how much pressure do you think usa will put on israel to keep quiet do you think it will work because israel to have to answer to its people i agree with you completely shekar because that's what israel has done and israel be, will also not listen to anyone beyond a point because for them it's a existential problem they probably been waiting for the right time when they can shift the story and they've done it is the iran israel and pakistan india war are driven by religious ideology pakistan india is a different game plan iran israel is ideology one part of it is ideology now israel by taking on iran wants to say to the entire muslim world that i am the boss i want to control the muslim world okay now that is the issue when it when iran takes on israel apart from the ideology point apart from giving help to palestinians and all that whereas the india pakistan is a derivative of our common problem of course it has taken the you know issue of uh, religious ideology radicalism and all that but the orientation in the ideology of iran versus israel is different from pakistan versus india pakistan it is revenge remember they have lost they have lost four wars with us plus they have lost the proxy war they have lost the political war they have lost, lost the economic war so that ideology is slightly different you have to understand the difference between the two don't conflate the two without thinking okay how will israel hit iran by aircraft when they have to pass through two to three countries your thoughts look israel doesn't have to use its aircraft first and foremost israel has got the capability to do aerial refueling and it will hit israel if it iran if it has to if it decides to do that it has the capability and israel doesn't have the uh, iran doesn't have the capability to retaliate that's the first thing okay but 
israel has the capability to create chaos within uh, iran which israel does, uh, iran doesn't have that right see the see the asymmetry which has no come in you know direct one to one between israel and iran israel has the cards now as long as it was through second hand and the puppets it was okay okay now is iran is forced to come out and fight in the open will it or will it show for peace in some manner with after you know seeing looking for a face saving exit that's the point which we have to see why is indian government against israel israel in supporting two state solution look indian government is not against israel let's be very clear about it but we have already said it's the two state solution the two state solution is the only solution this is our historic stand and that's the only way except israel and hamas and the palestinians everyone say two, two state solution is the way forward it's very funny that the protagonists in this whole story don't want that everyone else says that's a logical way forward okay so there has to be some logic in that okay right israel said it will not retaliate through strikes maybe they'll hurt iran in some other way when did they say so i heard the israeli defense forces spokesperson he said israel will do what it takes to do what it has to secure itself security and sovereignty of israel it will protect however it has, it has to and it also says i expect mischief from iran so they have some plans so let us see how it goes out it is not uh, whole story is not uh, thing israel iran is pressurized by uncle sam okay <laughs> that's very funny okay uh, israel provided western presence in asia which west us uk can use to control asia or as the launching ground for an invasion into asia i mean i think you are now in the you are hallucinating you must be out of your thing you i don't know where you are thinking okay after 20 years or so of proxy war turmoil between iran and israel which disturbed middle east now both nations will collide collide direct and realize remunerations and may pursue peace yes that's the thing that's what israel is trying hit iran iran comes out there's a direct thing and then the costs of this war for each of them will be pretty high that will come out wherever it has to come out in the open and then people will come to senses and they'll this thing that's why i said this goal posts have shifted if today if anything today things are nearer to a peaceful solution than before because after this iran will be under pressure to pull hamas back and hezbollah back and even houthis back okay so that's how things will move so it's nebulous it might go this way or that way but that's the way i read it moji modi ji doesn't react oh we'll wait we'll not talk of him so fast uh, i really hope uh, our government takes your suggestions let's see i hope so so far they have not okay jai hind jai bharat jai shri ram jai shri krishna jai mahakal bhai sab bol diya kuch aur to bolo बॉर्डर पर तनाव है क्या नहीं हमारे बॉर्डर पर तनाव नहीं है तनाव जो है वहां है ओके राइट सर द रोल ऑफ द सिक्योरिटी काउंसिल एंड यूनाइटेड नेशंस जनरल असेंबली हैव बीन ओवर द टाइम बिकम डिफंक्ट इज दिस द राइट टाइम दैट इंडिया स्टेप अप एंड फॉर्म अ ट्रू मल्टीलैटरल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बियॉन्ड द ब्रिक्स एंड द जी साउथ यस वी हैव ऑपर्चुनिटीज वी हैव डिप्लोमेटिक ऑपर्चुनिटीज Uh, i told you to get this war to a closure to you know settle the peace and take an active role in uh, steering everything to a, a peaceful uh, thing but will we do it if we don't know we have a opportunity to go to the un and say look it's better you enhance the security council because 
permanent members of the security council because anyway they are all actors in this war in fact they've been actors in even the pandemic they've been actors in this war so if those people are the ones who are the prime problems in any conflict situation how will they solve other problems how will they give leadership so you need alternate forms of leadership so that is where we have an opportunity if we play our cards well then as far as uh, multilateralism is concerned our role in brics and in the global south and in the shanghai cooperation organization has gone up okay and also in quad has gone up it is this ability to operate in both camps right gives you the ability to uh, you know today face up and say just take take a chill pill between both and get them to table to the table and talk and use those who want peace in the middle east like saudi arabia uae get them also to the table oman get egypt egypt is a major uh, you know what shall i say sufferer in this whole story because as red sea traffic has in- decreased the suez canal traffic has also decreased which means egypt finances have gone down egypt economy has gone down which is already in a problem so egypt is also in pain so it is time for india saudi arabia uae egypt maybe even nigeria maybe even indonesia these which don't have great direct stake in the system who also have a muslim uh, population and japan get them in and start a peace process this is the opportunity for india will india do it when the our own elections are on i don't know what presence of raw in iran after the blunder of revealing indian agents to identify iranian heavy covered i don't think this is a great issue at this point of time we will not take this I'll maybe some other day looking at the distance between these two countries is there any possibility of air battle in case of full fledged war it will be a one way battle because uh, israel doesn't have air force so it will be a one way battle and we've all already seen israel's uh, capabilities in terms of missiles in terms of air defense in terms of air power is much more and what iran has iran has only these drones and missiles they might have in you know close contact send all that but to fight this long range war no and iran doesn't have the capability to send its forces all across and fire it doesn't have the naval power its militia power cannot do you know the kind of damage it they would like to do on israel if the militias come and fight like ground soldiers they'll get massacred by israel so they'll not come the, i told you from the beginning that's why today actually i didn't want to touch this topic and i was going on the walk and i was uh, you know skimming news channels views yeah wo and f- thinking my own self it was somewhere towards the end i said look the game has changed i must now talk of uh, india china cold war a little later i'll talk of this today okay you have to understand the main thing today is the game has changed okay uh, example china pakistan they occupied india territory conducted india was india defended yes i think you have a point the value of defense has come out in this you see the value of defense to inflict a strategic defeat or a strategic stalemate or change the strategic game has come out in this today by iran deflecting so many drones right it is there is a strategic rethink on same thing which happened when we did the you know kailash range operations different approaches different methods but the strategic rethink on the part of china and from then to now four years we have sorted china out and that's actually the reason why this this whole story connects up with the india china cold war which i'll talk of right okay how to learn basic security geopolitics from basics yeah this is what i'm telling you this is what the whole story you follow me and you'll get it uh, okay when this animosity between israel and islamic countries 
uh, when this uh, going to reduce already world is tired of a war in eastern europe world is experiencing climatic disaster hope china doesn't take advantage china won't take advantage china is in a big problem i mean i've been telling you this everyone thinks that china is you know going to do everything in the world it cannot do anything i am very clear about it today okay it's in a big problem by itself i've told you if china does anything and if others do something against china you have the strait of hormuz which can be blocked this uh, babal mandab which can be blocked and malacca strait which can be blocked by different methods then china is kaput okay so don't think that china can do everything the animosity between israel and islamic countries will not reduce in a hurry especially this countries like turkey turkey might still reconcile because it's part of nato and the, its tail will be twisted but israel and pakistan they are the problems not israel sorry iran and pakistan they are the problems against uh, israel saudi arabia and uae will reconcile lebanon will reconcile one day right if the day iran is sorted out or iran comes to terms with this whole story then you will find this hezbollah hamas and all will have to this thing but at the end there has to be a solution to the israel palestine problem in some manner otherwise this will not end okay sir is there any possibilities of saudi siding with israel to loosen iran proxies in that region as it would be in their best strategic interest to weaken iran's proxies like houthis yes already the indications are there that will happen see take the ship which was uh, impounded by the israelis sorry by the iranians i'm mixing up today israelis and iranians that was taking oil from saudi and uae uh, areas to israel isn't it so already there is and before this the abram accord was there already there are indications that uh, saudis and the uae chaps are saying look let's solve the palestinian problems and go ahead the imac is at uh, stake and many more things are at stake so this they will right that's why i said in the beginning they this has the potential of splitting the iran saudi peace deal and iran will now find itself cornered slowly whether it will happen or not we'll see but something will happen yeah maybe iran already own nuclear and hence got courage to directly jump with own identity instead of proxy look so has israel okay so and iran is not a fool and iran so far maybe just a screwdriver away from nuclear capability so what if it has nuclear capability does it have the delivery means israel might have what if israel takes action against iranian nuclear facilities it has had the history of doing so iran is at risk today understand that yeah as chances of russia and china getting involved indirectly yes directly no both don't have the capability of direct involvement in this area we have seen for the past 6 months china has a base in djibouti they have been sitting inside tight they are not been moving out anywhere so don't expect china to come all out and china is having problems there and china doesn't have the capability of doing something in south china sea and in this area and china doesn't want to you know get involved here and get shown out bhai agar china ka ek jahaz yahan doob gaya to fir to baith gaya na china wala topi laga ke all of us will say ye kya chinese hai gol nahi dikhayega wo abhi dekh lo you take my word let me see if china will take a strident role and no one is going to listen to china if china doesn't have the military muscle to do things here people listen to usa because usa can get force china can't get force here if it cannot get force and force a resolution nothing will happen india still is using force in the uh, for anti piracy there it has people respect india for that remember all these things okay Does Israel have a navy? 
can israel use its navy to start some sort of a contact war with iran no that can't happen israel's navy is towards the mediterranean it doesn't have any navy which can deploy here but in any case why does it need a navy it has the us navy to handle its affairs right if things go up you know at some point of time look at the escalation ladder just understand the escalation ladder uh, okay now this is where it is iran did some israel did something iran responded by this drone strike fine iran israel just reflected it israel does something then iran will retaliate in this tutu mai mai and you know up and down what if something someone else gets hit there some uav chap or saudi arabia or us uh, facility or kuwaiti facility or something happens in iran or something happens in iraq or syria after all in these places there are us bases some hot headed fool does something then the contact war will be between usa and iraq usa and iran i mean iraq means the militias there so you have to understand the contact war how it will fold, unfold and usa doesn't want to get involved in a, a contact war in uh, iran that i'm very clear even a non contact war against iran will be very very solid if usa gets into the thing and it will be at the cost of iran so it's we are in a edge so government leaders comment on no invade of territory of india by china why they so so just wait we'll do it next week when we talk of uh, cold war do you think iran has deliberately been pulled into a kinetic war by israel so that it can get an excuse to attack iran to settle the threat of nukes once and for all possible i told you it's a deliberate plan and move by israel to do what it has done against iran a lot of options this has opened out options for israel which it never had before right and it has backed iran into a uh, corner that's the thing okay uh will biden force israel to was out difficult on the other hand uh, the us people might say tell iran i mean to tell israel to go ahead also marginally it will give a little leeway okay out of iranian proxies hamas and gaza houthi and amen have now been sorted to an extent syria was under target uh, hezbollah in world two question is iran out of proxies now i will not say iran is out of proxies but the value of proxies now has gone down the problem before iran at the cost of reputation is now there's a direct conflict between iran and israel which iran can't win that's the point iran it is unwinnable for iran peace means they have to pull these uh, proxies back if they pull the proxies back israel is okay happy then you can look at just israel is then focusing only on hamas and it'll whatever it goes it'll go if that doesn't happen now the proxies continue israel will continue with iran okay if iran stops control of the proxies the proxies will wither away because the missiles everything comes from iran so that's why i said there's a this is a great strategic shift which has happened how this will pan out we'll see chances of revolution in iran if top mullah's regime changes irani people and israel will be happy i think uh, doubtful at this point of time okay the the authoritarian regimes it's not so easy to overturn them especially at these times you know longer term we don't know what will happen when india will start mediating it seems india is the only neutral major country i agree with you completely that's what i told for india it's an opportunity 
uh, to play the role of a global statesman. Because everyone, UK, US, China, Russia, uh, and France are all part of the problem. They're not, they're not apart from the problem. The only nations which are apart from the problem today, which are really apart from the problem are Egypt, to some extent, Nigeria, Brazil maybe, uh, South Africa, India, Japan, and Indonesia. I'm talking of the bigger nations. Out of this, who's got the maximum weight? Who will these people all, uh, who, who uh, where, uh, you know, leverages exist for Iran, Israel, uh, maybe to uh, some extent Lebanon and all to listen? India and the Middle East. Acceptability is India. So, opportunity. Israel can use nukes on Lebanon and Iran. No, they'll not do that. They don't need to do it. Actually, at this point of time, there's no need of nukes. Don't go it. Abhi to, yaar, kail bhi asli shuru nahi hua, ab nuke pe chale jai. Nuke me, nuke is far away. Okay. Ji, differ at this point, but the catalyst in both the circumstances arising is desert. I mean, I don't know your language. It would be more clear. Do you think Iran has deliberately been pulled into kinetic war by Israel? Yes. It, I, we've said that earlier. Uh, Neeraj Kulkarni, China is building 150 nuclear reactors. One of the purposes. Yeah, we'll talk of this in the Cold War. This is one of the points there. Yeah, Jai Bharat. Fani Raj, welcome uh, as a YouTube member. I would request more to come in. Like I keep saying, uh, what more come in, uh, more girls get educated who can't afford education. Sir, USA is pretending to calm down the situation by is saying Israel to stop now. In hindsight, USA might be wanting Israel to hit Iran for weapon selling. Possible. All these things open out. I have no doubt. Sir, good evening. Hamas seems to have made a big blunder by trying to get leverage by holding on to hostages. This is a sensitive issue in Israel. Hence, they want to hit all with the gloves off. Yes. Look, any leverage has a time. Beyond that time, that leverage is of no use. Okay. I think Hamas has stretched the whole story. And Hamas, by not coming to table and, you know, coming with a political solution and sticking to its stand that we will not have any political solution with Israel has put Iran in a corner. Okay, now Iran has to react. The Muslim world has to react. Everyone will react there. You watch the fun. This is only the start of the whole story. Is there a change of regime change in Iran? Doubtful. Sir, is Chinese web and quality getting exposed in the strike, not as it. What's next in line? Will Israel respond? Israel will. In my opinion, they will. How it will, we'll see. Is this a plan of Israel to openly destroy nuclear weapons context in, yeah, in this context? Yeah, that's what they've already indicated. Because earlier... Israel has done something against the uh, Iranian weapon, no, I won't say nuclear capability. Okay. So, uh, by doing this, they have opened that window. So, Israel will have to factor this in in their plans ahead. And Iran will have to factor this, how to defend itself. See, now the shoe has shifted. Now, Israel will not defend itself. It is Iran which has to defend itself. Okay, if it does anything. Fingers crossed, Hiri, Iranians hate being under Islamic rule. Okay, we'll see. Okay, I am reaching out from Sweden with a request for insights regarding the ongoing tensions between is Iran and Israel and its potential impact on the upcoming Indian elections and economy. Look, the tensions between Iran and Israel for the past one hour I've been speaking. Have a look at it again and that's where it is. Impact on Indian elections, I don't think will happen. I mean, I don't think. 
uh, uh, there's going to be much. Uh, there will be talk whether you'll mediate or not, whether they can mediate or not, whether the political parties are in a position to mediate or not. And it, this will not be an electoral issue. This is not the issue on which, you know, the villager from some remote village in Rajasthan or Andhra Pradesh or Telangana will vote for or against the party. That's the way I look at it. And many of these things, you know, it doesn't affect their nokri, it doesn't affect their, uh, uh, you know, facilities and services which they get. It doesn't affect their mangai. It doesn't, you know, those fundamental things are what people look at in the villages. For them, this Iran and Israel war is too far away. And the elections effect will be that much lesser. Okay, what's the status of hostages and what's being done to get them back? Nothing. I mean, whatever they're doing, we all know. It's in open public. Uh, and uh, knowing Israel, they don't, they wouldn't mind not uh, sacrificing them. I wouldn't say they wouldn't mind. Uh, if they have to sacrifice, someone will pay. That time very clear. So that's the way Israel works. So they'll make someone pay. Okay. Uh, pause. Do you think India should withdraw its troops from UN peacekeeping forces? No, not at all. There's, both are disconnected everywhere. Uh -huh. Yeah, CC in Egypt is livid, angry. Egypt needs the money, which I told you. The Suez Canal traffic has gone down. Money from Suez Canal to Egypt has gone down. Egypt's economy is going down. As it is, it's in almost a problem. Yeah. Hum Israel Iran war se kya learn kar sakte hain? Very good question, Abhi. We have a lot to learn. You should know how to differentiate between the tactical and the strategic. You should understand that the what moves you do and what will be the strategic implications of each move you do. And you should know how to get the advantage, turn a disadvantage into an advantage. Okay. And we should learn from our own thing. You see how Iran uh, has been put on the back foot by Israel. It has turned the whole story. Same thing we did against China in the Kailash Range operations. You know, we, the uh, change is there. So both these things are important. We have to learn how to do this. Okay. For example, after that Yangtze incident in October 22, they have not come back again. They have learned. Okay. You should know how to hold this whole story. Right now, Maldives, there is a shift which is happening. It's 50-50. How do you make this end against China or an, a disadvantage China? This is the challenge in front of us, Maldives. Because if you Maldives, if you uh, the China Walonko, it will be a big Cold War. Mein. Our Cold War is going on. There is no two ways. I will talk about this in the future. Why should India bring peace when USA does everything the high way? Look, at this point of time, USA might need our help to get peace into the area. Remember, USA is also going through elections. right? Ye, this will become their election uh, you know, problem. This will figure highly in their elections. It will impact their elections more than our elections. And there's a limit to what USA can do in this. And USA, and it's a messy situation for everyone. Okay. Israel doesn't have an air force. So Israel has an air force. It's the Iran which it doesn't have an air force. Yeah, AG, why are you asking so many questions? The same questions I have explained. Is this heading towards World War Three? We are almost in a quasi-World War Three in some manner, if you look at it. But these three are different. Uh, the South China Sea uh, theater, the West Asian theater, and the Ukraine theater, they're not connected. Uh, the dots are not getting connected so far. To that extent, there are three different stories going on so we have stakes both in israel and iran de-escalation is important for us yes i agree with you 100 percent imac and chabahar both at stake oil prices will have a huge impact i'm hoping that we can play a role in peace 
I also hope so. That's what I started. This is a great opportunity for India and India should take it with both hands. If I were an, anyone in the government of India and the external affairs ministry, I would already start talking towards Iran and Israel to calm things down and to USA how to get a way out of this whole story. Diplomatic role of Bharat now, what is our ability in terms of reaching hotheads and getting both sides in Iran and Israel to listen to our leaders as mediators? Can we do potential hai hamare paas to do this? With this no, I have no doubt in my mind at all. Whether we are got the political will to do it, whether we have the uh, you know legs at this point of time to do it when the elections are on is the question. It will take you know, outreach at the highest level to do it. So whether can we do it with the, we will do it or like to do it. That's the point. You see, the problem with India, uh, which many people say is that India promises a lot, but delivers very little. That's the view uh, in the public international circles. But of course, there's another view. Uh, India doesn't promise much, but delivers much more. There's a counter view also. So whether you want to promise and then deliver or not promise and then deliver is a question. Whether you want to make it public and so that everyone knows is the issue at hand. But we have a great opportunity and we have stakes. I told you, our agriculture will get hit because all our pharma uh, 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 fertilizers are dependent on the a large part of our uh, fertilizer it comes from that area. Okay. And oil. Yeah, I've uh, already said so. Okay, Sri Hari, how will the scenario plan out if Russia steps to help Iran militarily? The first question, how can Russia help Iran militarily at this point of time? That's the question. It doesn't have the capability. Will Russia send its planes? Then it's World War Three. Will Russia send its troops? No. Do Russia and Iran have such a pact? No. Does Russia have the capability of doing all this when it's stuck with Ukraine? Remember, Russian capability has been degraded considerably in the past two years. USA will step in as well. USA has lost no combat capability. So USA still has, oh, calls the shot. Can India get sucked into this mess? It, not militarily. We should make the diplomatic foray. Okay? Not the military foray. As there are no common geographical borders, is there a chance for this conflict to become kinetic? It's already become kinetic. Kinetic doesn't mean hand-to-hand. -hand -hand. Even non-contact warfare is kinetic. It's already become kinetic. General, your views on Iran, Israel tonight itself are most precious for your regular viewers on Gunna Shot. Would have wanted to hear your views tonight only. That's what I've done. I only hope I made some sense. Don't you feel this is a bad move by Iran? This gives license for Israel to shift attention away from Gaza. And I completely agree with you. Uh, Iran has played this bad. They, I mean, see, for it's for two reasons it's gone out of control one that the kinetic move has not made effect okay they've just sent 300 drones 300 drones and missiles have not made an effect it's a huge thing okay everyone talks of drones and missile warfare they've done nothing okay so that is one loss completely Iran defending itself is a gain for Iran. I mean, Israel defending itself is a gain for uh, Israel. So th on that count, Israel has won in, in this round. And Iran has lost it. The other thing in where it has lost is it has shown its hand, its incapability to do anything beyond a point without its puppets. When the game is changed, how do you respond is the thing. 
Israel has changed the game. It has changed the goalpost. It has changed the playing field. That is where now Iran is in a quandary. Uh, sir, I live in UK and I find your channel is with substance and no fluff. Thank you again for sharing your perspective and knowledge. This is priceless, sir. Said so that get more friends of yours to join in. Uh, the more who join in, the more you yarn you get. Okay, actually, I really speaking, uh, I'm a little uh, unhappy with myself. I should have got someone else to talk about all this, but I really didn't get time. It was only at about six o'clock when I was in the walk that I decided that I'll do this. So by the time I came back and I, you know, made this fundamental things, I had to do an, it myself. And it was already 7, 7.30. I couldn't invite anyone over. But uh, let me see as days go by what I can do. Yeah. What will be the future of IMEC after this situation? IMEC will go through. Don't don't be in a hurry. It's not a one-day affair. It's not a two-day affair. It's a, not a one-year affair. It's not a two-hour affair. It's a long-term affair. IMEC will go through. IMEC is anywhere operating in the peninsula, Arabian Peninsula, UAE, and all that. Uh, Oman. All these three countries want IMEC. Whether they, you like it or not, they want it. Why? Climate change is happening. They need food. India is the source. They have oil resources are finite. Renewable energy is the way forward. Hydrogen, green hydrogen is the way forward. Technology is the way forward. It will go through. Whether it will go across to Europe, it might get delayed, but it will go. Yeah, stop spamming. Yeah, I agree with you. Oh, it's okay. Let him spam. Let him do what he wants. Don't worry. China sent warship to patrol the Red Sea, but they are hiding in Djibouti Harbor. Yes, I agree with you. That's what I've been saying. Is China's BRI... Is debate control? Is for debate control? Oh, it's a waste of time. Why do? Uh, General Narpat Singh is retired. Uh, is he the old guy or the new guy? Uh, I, old person, I don't know. Uh, I don't know whom you're talking of. Give me a mail. Give me an email who it is, then I'll tell you. Where will India stand as we head for election as this conflict gets more serious, sir? See, irrespective of where the election goes, our stand is very clear. We have to be neutral and get them to the tip. How serious, no matter how serious it goes. And we have a lot of levers with both uh, Israel and Iran to stop the story. In all these developments, we don't hear anything from Turkey as it has its own ambitions of being a regional superpower. Why is Turkey silent throughout this war? No, Turkey's tail is being twisted by USA, NATO. Okay. Turkey for long has played both sides of the coin. So, you know, if Turkey does too much, it has too much to lose in this whole story. Remember, Turkey is part of NATO. It wants to be EU also. It wants to get the benefit of everything. So, it's not so easy. It's not so easy for Turkey to also remember Turkey has been allowed by USA to station its troops in Qatar. Turkey ka punch to pakad ke rakha hai in sabne. Turkey will talk in you know Russia against ye wo all that in Azerbaijan ye wo all that. Yeah, there's one interesting thing which I want to tell you. Which thank you. I mean you brought this, but I let me tell you. You know what? Look at this again, not this. I'll get to the other. Uh, very, 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 very interesting. Look at this. Look at Iran. And look at Azerbaijan on top. Azerbaijan and Iran have a huge border. Who helps Azerbaijan? Interesting. Who helps Azerbaijan? Israel. Azerbaijan and Iran have problems. So Iran is vulnerable on that border also. This suddenly just struck me as I was talking of Turkey. I'll show the map again. Look at this. 
Look at this. Look at that on the top northwest corner of Iran is Azerbaijan. And there's a big border there. Israel, Azerbaijan. So actually speaking, Israel has better chances of going kinetic against uh, Iran than the vice versa. Thank you. You asked me about Turkey, which right, Hiteshwar. Israel has the Iron Dome, but what if Israel sent the same amount of drones and missiles towards Iran? Iran would be decimated. Got to be, yeah, I agree with you. I told you, Israel doesn't have uh, Iran doesn't have this kind of uh, layered air defense or the sophisticated air defense which uh, Israel has. See, the thing is, this that uh, another point: Iran's defenses have been tested for so long, right? Now it can be in the offensive and defensively safe. Uh, Hamas, whether you will like it or not, Hamas has been degraded quite a bit. It might survive as a political force, but as a military force, it has been degraded. So there's no chance of an attack from the rear. Okay. Now it is up to Houthis. What will Houthis do? Fire two, three missiles. That's about all. What will Hezbollah do? They'll be thinking now that Iran is under attack, Hamara kya hoga kali. So all that all those actions come into play. Okay, if US Navy gets involved, as you say, Russia has threatened to enter Siberia. So, yes, up to let us see what happens. This, Russia will Russia have the capability to do so is the question. Yeah, should India send mercenaries, weapons, and money to Israel Defense Forces to fight? No, no, we shouldn't do all that. We shouldn't be doing anything against either. Uh, against Iran or Israel. We have stakes with both. Please understand. I am talking all this from a very neutral viewpoint. Opportunity India. I have spoken of the military and the political discourse there, not here. As far as India is concerned, we have no stakes. Who wins is irrelevant to us. Getting peace there is relevant to us. We have good relations with Iran. We have good relations with Israel. Get them to peace. You will come out better. Lessons for India have already said. Opportunity. Lessons for India, opportunity. Create opportunities. Create, turn adverse situations into opportunities. Okay? Seek opportunities in chaos. Every chaos gives you an opportunity. Okay, this is a great opportunity which we need. Okay. Right. Okay. After start of con uh, kinetic conflict between Iran and Israel last night, I think how precious were the words of General KJ Singh and 4 General Show. Be prepared for war to avoid war. Yes, I agree with you. You need to be prepared completely for war to avoid war. There's another thing I'll tell a corollary to, to this. Be prepared for war before you start for a war. Iran, I think, has overstretched itself in this game of, uh, you know, militias. Now that it is in a direct one-to-one -one war with Israel, its weakness will show up and it has to recoil. It's a different thing whether uh, Iran will get hit so badly by Israel or Israel has plans to take a com complete war. But the vulnerability of uh, Iran has come out in this whole story. Okay. Tomorrow, Iran can do something else. We'll see how it is. Thing. I'm not saying that Iran... Has, Lost and Israel has won. This round is gone to uh, Israel. I am from a village in Rajasthan. Welcome. What is the effect? Let me give you give me an answer by the time I finish. What is the effect of this whole thing on elections in your village? Aapke ghar mein kya hoga? Kuch nahi hoga. Yehi mera soch hai. Aap bata dijiye. Yeah. Israel's success of interception is very good. We should invest more and more in drones and AD systems. In fact, we have enemy at our borders. I agree completely. 
China is is China helping Iran, especially to develop its weapon systems completely? Uh, China is giving all kinds of help to Iran. There's no doubt about it in my mind, right? But you can't build an air force overnight. You can't build a rocket force overnight. You can't build space capabilities overnight, surveillance capabilities overnight. The Iran model of battle is good as far you are using gray zone warfare, asymmetric warfare, and all. But at some point of time, you know you have to face up to the fact that Israel has also got a lot of uh, asymmetric options. How will 0.5 front within India react if it's I don't think we have a 0.5 front within India. That's a wrong statement to make, Hari. I don't agree with it completely. So I'll not answer this uh, question. At Gunnershot, sir, Israelis were found using AI to create target lists. Software called Where's Daddy was used to hit militants, particularly when at home and with their families. Should it be outlawed? Why should it be outlawed? They're doing it for themselves. And AI is a reality which we'll have to face. Right, and uh, it's up to even if you outlaw it, how does it matter? Uh, if someone outlaws it, what's the applicability of that outlawing or law in Israel? They'll do, do it, so it's not we shouldn't uh, think of all that. Will Israel retaliate? I think so, it should retaliate unless it's been given, it's given a deal which is sweet. Let us see where it will go. Attack on an Iranian consulate by Israel, was it justifiable? Well, diplomatically, it was not justifiable. In war, the way things were going, Israel has done what it has to. There's no justification in war. Tomorrow, if there's war, I'll also do the same thing. If I'm in a if I have to do whatever I have to do, I'll do it. There's nothing, all is fair in love and war. As simple as that. Okay, you can at best condemn Israel for doing that. So what if he, he's been condemned for so many things? Why is this USA restraining Israel? Is it because USA has to prepare for Taiwan? Look, there are too many interests of too many people in West Asia at this point of time. There's a problem for energy. There's a problem of fertilizers. There's a problem of many things. So that is why USA is restraining Israel. Okay. And uh, so, it, it's talking sense. Let us see where it goes. Okay, is Iran's move to attack Israel more of a compulsive action or there has been a shift in its strategic restraint policy? It's a compulsion. They can't but retaliate. If they don't retaliate, the regime is at risk. They have to show internally that they have retaliated. They will show some videos of these things going and bursting somewhere and creating chaos and all that internally, right? This is like China. To that extent, though we have a relation, good relationship with Iran, Iran is at the end an authoritative regime which controls its own media. So they'll do what they have to do. So whether they're fired, they'll show a series of firing. They'll show some destruction taking place. They'll show they've destroyed uh, Israel. So all that story will go on. Why did Israel uh, retaliate yet? Why is he waiting? He'll wait. He'll take his time. How is this current conflict affect PAs of nuclear weapons program? Will they be more likely to nuclearize because of this conflict? See, you have to understand the nuclear weapon program of Iran to think that they'll become nuclear tomorrow. They have to become nuclear. Then they have to get adequate fissile material to make a warhead. And then they'll go this thing. So it is a long way off. They have to test this warheads. So there's a long way off before Iran has nuclear weapon capability. Whether it goes nuclear for energy is something else. Why Iran create proxies for Islam? No, it is not for Islam. For control over the Islamic world. For influence over the Islamic world to show that it's the leader. To show that it is a civilizational power. What are the chance of rest of Sunni countries jumping in this war to prove their superiority? Why should they stay away? They will not uh, jump in. 
because there's too much at stake for them and uh, i don't think they want war and their economies will get hit they're not why should they get involved with it so you help america they won't even mention it was just like usa never mentioned our role in world war 2 and i don't think we should get into this at this point of time should india oppose iran's effort to develop nuclear bombs nuclear bombs yes nuclear capability no right nuclear capability it's they they, they can act, but it as far as it's a peace, peaceful nuclear capability it is okay but should we help them no we shouldn't help them directly on that i have no doubt there's no question of helping them okay it's a matter of opposing them or being with them right we can keep quiet as far as they do it for peaceful purposes not for uh, uh, you know weaponizing the nuclear weapon. however and whatever has done has helped stop cp yeah i agree with you completely yeah yeah same questions are being repeated i'll not take okay somewhere this seems like a premeditated step and like russia iran has not used its best weapons at this time iran seems to have saved better weapons for future war battles what better do they have that's the first question they have rockets and missiles and drones that's it they are all good for short range uh, actions not not for long range weapon systems the problem with drones which is now coming out is they are very slow moving objects they can be swatted out like flies okay and uh, it's a premeditated step and it's a orchestrated step by iran to uh, you know fire this 300 missiles but they would have thought if i fire 300 at least 100 will go and fall nothing fell so that's where that's where it is there is nothing left to say in an earlier episode you said that the hotels have capability to hit us houthis have the capability to hit us warships up to 2000 kilometers can iran not do the same to or is it holding itself it has the capability it might have tried with some missiles now and they've been hit down that's about all houthis have the capability of firing uh, anti ship ballistic missiles but they've all been uh, against us warships but they've all been swatted away that's the point will pakistan have any role to play in this war ha huh, yeah they have a fantastic role to play in this war and every war which is all around the globe and in any peaceful situation they can go with a begging bowl and say yaar hame de do kuch to de do baba that's the only role they have yeah why turkish troops are stationed in qatar is it for Tur- qatari defense colony <laughs> defense only can a worst case triad of pakistan qatar turkey ever get activate against bharat in the future no no forget it all this is don't now you are going into imagination okay half front threat from isk and asymmetrical warfare from peak pak proxies can be utilized also will give pak give air bases again to get yeah you chaps are now going off track forget it is it not in our interest that us and china engage in this conflict yeah whether it's in our infant this thing these are all uh, you know far away thoughts too much pakistan will have any meaningful role to play in this war yes i told you begging bowl okay yeah why iran doesn't have an air force interesting question iran was never allowed to have an air force never allowed and their air force was destroyed and what little air force they have uh, you know they don't get anything no one was prepared to sell anything to iran uh, the rush they they had even their civil aircraft were russian oriented a lot of civil aircraft within iran have gone down because the russians couldn't supply them spares and all that and uh, the iranians are now looking at china for air force but then the chinese air force is what it is and the, what they sell okay kapil sharma your views are logical thank you 
look, I've expressed a set of views. Tomorrow I might change my views based on how the situation unfolds. Okay, I'll take questions of those who I have not answered. Uh, is it possible that Russia and China combined together? No, no, out of question. YouTube user. Do you see regime change happening now in Iran as Israel's counter -mute? No, it will not happen in a hurry. Uh, what will happen if nuclear missile is intercepted? It will burst in the air. There will be an air burst. There is someone else who will buy it. See, if it's burst in the air, in between and intercepted, the nuclear radiation will be where? It will be over Iraq or Syria or UAE, Saudi Arabia, Jordan. Then they'll be held to pay for Iran or Israel, depending on who uses it. Okay. So I don't see that going, going that far. Good to be back after on gunshot after a while sir was it ssb alabad conference doubt was the attack on Ir iranian embassy bait to drag it, iran into attacking and in return finishing off its nuclear yeah yeah this is a pre-planned stuff uh, iranians have reacted exactly the way israelis wanted okay how will this affect the US dollar and price of gold? Will Bitcoin be affected? Price of gold will go through the roof because as it is, Chinese are buying gold as if there's no tomorrow. Okay, the dollar will also go up. You'll see a lot of uh, collaterals. So collaterals will be global inflation. The collateral will be oil. Oil prices will go up. As it is, Brent was going at $90 a barrel. I, I expect it to cross 100 by in the next three, four days. Hydrogen nuclear weapon. Yeah, yeah, you are in some orbit. Forget about it. I mean, let me explain. You know, these missiles and all will not go high. They'll go at some low level. So, this will be an air burst. Now, it is not a matter of uh, fallout. It's a matter of other collateral damages. And hydrogen weapons are the second stage after uranium and plutonium weapons. Why stage name is hydrogen weapons are both dur ki baat hai. So don't 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 let your imagination go wild. Okay, Sai, relax. Is it going the nuclear way? I don't see that going the nuclear way. Uh, last question. What is US thinking right now? US will be thinking they put Iran in a corner, how to cool the situation down, and how to now pressurize Iran to effect a pullback on all the militias, and how to get Iran out of the equation, and how to get Israel to and Hamas to talk sense and get to an end. And for that, I'm very sure we, they'll need India. Okay, I think we have finished the whole thing. Thanks a lot for attending. Uh, I hope this was good for all of you. So many questions and you're all interested naturally. So I'll hold that thing on India-China Cold War a few days later. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, good evening and Jai Hind.